Hi, this is April from The Mill, and today we're here with John Benson, our turf specialist for The Mill, and we are going to talk today about armyworms. He has been seeing um, some damage from armyworms, and so John, can you share with us what you're seeing and a little bit about what armyworms are? Yeah, this all started probably less than 10 days ago. People start reporting their lawns looked droughty, and of course, in that time period, We've had five inches of rain, so obviously that was not the problem. Now in this area, I've been doing this for over 30 years. I have never seen an army worm invasion that's happening right now like it is. When large areas of your turf look like it's been through a drought of two months with no rain. And you know it's not the case because we've had plenty of rain. These things can, I've seen it, we had a, a orchard grass field up over the PA line in Airville, Pennsylvania. It was three or four acres. And last Friday, it was perfectly fine. Monday afternoon, the owner went and looked at it and it was pretty much 100% gone. And these army worms like the higher cut grass, like in lawns, roughs of uh, golf courses. And it starts with a moth. That moth can lay up to a thousand eggs, usually six to 800, sometimes a thousand. These go through five instars very quickly in less than three weeks. They become moths and they lay up to a thousand eggs. So the damage can be extensive very fast once you get enough numbers of these. That's why they call them army. If you come out in the evening or early in the morning, right as you know, dusk or sunset or sunrise, and you have a very big infestation of these, it'll look like the ground is moving. You go look at it. There's so many of them that they're just moving on the surface of the grass. And at that time, it's too late. Your turf is going to be gone. I've seen extensive damage in northern Harford County, Baltimore County. And then today, I've had reports in Bel Air of a milling company I work with. They have a route they did today. It was 15 or 16 lawns, and they found them on seven out of 15 lawns just today, but damage just starting. It's going to be a major problem going forward here in the next two, three, four, even five weeks until we get a cold snap and a frost. So we need some cold weather quickly, more quickly than we usually get. OK, and I brought up a picture that you had um, taken recently. And so yes. this would be somewhat of a pattern you'd see in your lawn. Um, yeah, the patterns are just wherever it, it first started and it keeps spreading. Um, what will happen, that particular lawn was yesterday in northern Harford County. Um, he's a kind of a farmer, has five acres of turf, so he has the capability of spraying it. He went and got some spray to spray it last night. So hopefully in his case, that's as bad as it's going to get. Probably a little bit worse before they all die. But of the five acres, I would say he had an acre and a half affected that was pretty much dead. And is that permanent? turf death or will it rebound? What, what are if they actually doing to the turf? Eating the leaf blade off right at the uh, surface. So they chew into it. It breaks all the uh, cell walls. Therefore, it looks like it's when you first see it, it looks like your yard is droughty and that may be a day or two and then it turns into that on day three. And at that point, it's pretty much dead and it's not coming back. The only option is a tiny bit will, but aeration and seeding is pretty much the only option once it gets to that point. So if you have large patches of brown from these army words, worms within a couple of days, you're, you're basically going to have to reseed your lawn. Correct. I mean, if you have a, like in his case, he has five acres, about an acre and a half was affected. So our goal was to save, you know, what was there, and he did a, a spray uh, last evening. So he probably killed 95% of what's there, so maybe it won't get to the other three acres. But, um, yeah, it's it's going to be, uh, I've heard they're far, as far north as uh, Cleveland now, and they've hardly ever make it past North Carolina. Maybe Virginia, maybe Southern Maryland a few times, but they're in Pennsylvania, Cleveland. I heard they're up to Chicago. And it's uh, is really getting bad, quick. The wow. the fat, how fast they go, is insane. Where you start with one or two, and within 
you know, you don't really see any damage. But then those one or two have 2,000 or more babies. That's when the damage starts and then it just multiplies. And what is their life cycle? They have five instars. They go from different, you know, from the pupa up all the way to the worm. But those five instars only take two and a half to three weeks. So if you have one moth come and we'll just make it easy, say that one moth happened to fly into your yard, laid a thousand eggs, they hatch and you start seeing a small spot that's starting to look droughty. You know, that can't be droughty. Maybe it's brown patch. And people don't really realize what's going on. But then those thousand lay a thousand more eggs. So now you have a thousand times a thousand. And at that point, it's too late. It's pretty much toast. So so you had mentioned that you've never really seen this in 30 years in this area. So they're not typically a prevalent issue for the mid Atlantic no. area. Where where did they come from? They're always present down in warmer climates, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Texas. They're pretty much a year round th uh, threat. So they're sprayed for and there's programs in place to control these. But up here, I can never in all my years of managing turf, having seen or you know sprayed for an army worm. And that's been over 30 years. So um, the first sign is going to be brown patches. And if you see a brown patch in your yard, then you should consider that army worms could be that, or it could be a fungal issue. Right. How, the is easiest there... way um, to check for army worms, if you start getting dry patches or small patches, is number one, look down where the uh, soil meets the turf, and you might see brown little pupas, or if they are full size worm, various lengths, they can be up to over an inch long, but the baby, the smaller ones are, are way tinier. If you don't see any, um, and it's during the day, or the best time to check is right around the evening. Get a half gallon or a gallon of soapy water, pour it in the spot. They do not like that. They will come wiggling out of the ground, and then you'll be like, okay, I have army worms. It's not that bad. I can still control it. But you have to be fast. A matter of days, they can take out acres. Okay, so they look in the pupa stage. I've I've brought up a picture here. They're Correct. small, round, small and brown. And then um, as yes, they that, pic that picture was that picture was taken this morning at a lawn in Bel Air. And then they'll develop into a worm this shape um, with a stripe on it. Yep. And then they turn into a brown moth once they mature. Correct. And then that moth wants to go do its thing. And when it does, there's a thousand more eggs laid. So you can, you know, you do the math. It's like in, in no time at all, it's an army. That's why they call them army worms. And they just spread out and devour everything in their path as far. They like, you know, home lawns and uh, the rough at golf courses. They really don't like uh, they don't like any crabgrass or any weeds or even the Bermuda grass. Um, they don't like that either. Tall fescue and um, annual bluegrass, bluegrass, ryegrass. They love it. OK, and so when you see them, how do you control them? Well, if you catch them early enough, any of they're actually really easy to cook to kill pretty much any um, Carboro or Bifrinthrin, even seven will work some. Merit, if you did treat your yard with merit in the spring, it does have some effect, but not all that great. A Celeprin is excellent for immediate control, plus you get another two or three months of residual control. So, you know, if you go out with a contact um, insecticide like Bifrinthrin or Carborel, you're going to kill what's there. But I guarantee you there's some eggs in there that haven't hatched yet which won't be effective. So you have to probably spray one more time. If you can get your hands on some of Celeprin, all this stuff needs to be watered in, by the way, so it gets into the soil. Then you have residual, you're one and done. And yeah, you can control the damage early on. If half your yard is gone, I'd still try to save the other half by using um, an Celeprin product. 
At the mill, we do have a uh, fertilizer with Acceloprin. It's a 1505. And it's a 50 pound bag and it's you got to put at least four bags to the acre and it needs to be watered in. So if it's not going to rain and you do purchase the product, doesn't need to be watered in with inches, just one good watering and it'll activate whatever's there will die and any future generations coming back because it's a systemic. It gets into the roots and the plants If they try to eat anything that's been treated. They die. OK, so and the mill has the some of the products that you mentioned um, and they are available for the average homeowner to buy, correct? Yes, we also have a product. It's called Bug Destroyer, which has a, a celebrant in it too. Each bag treats 2,500 square feet, I do believe. Um, they're really good for the smaller lawns, for the bigger lawns, for you know this fall, even just to be protected, I would uh, recommend you know, you as your fall fertilizer very soon using the 1505 with the Celeprin. Very good fertilizer, 40% slow release, and you're getting the protection of the Acceloprin. I do believe that in a week or 10 days or two weeks, this is going to be pretty widespread in um, Northern Maryland, Harford, probably even Cecil, Baltimore County. It's on the lower eastern shore. This is going to be a very big problem here in the coming weeks. So we had a turf expo a couple days ago for some of the turf professionals that are our customers, lawn maintenance um, professionals as well as golf course managers. And one of the speakers that we had was from Chesapeake Valley Seed. And John was talking about the growing conditions this past year in the um, in the state of Oregon where 90% of the grass seed comes from and was talking about drastic drought and loss of crop out there. So I we have been seeing grass seed prices ratcheting up. It's and and we are hearing that supplies are going to be tight. Um, so what is what do you recommend um, homeowners do? Should they start fertilizing early with a celeprin and try to prevent an infestation? So because grass seed reseeding your lawn is going to be really hard and very, very expensive in the upcoming at least 12 months. And depending on how next year's seed crop does, maybe 15 to 24 months. That yeah, that's exactly correct. Today, um, actually, I pretty much sold the rest of the Excel at the Bel Air location. We have pallets coming next week. I myself, I have a beautiful acre lawn at home. I bought four bags for myself because Yes, I would get that product as quick as possible. Get it out. It's your fall fertilizer anyways, and then you know you're protected. Seed prices in Oregon, unfortunately, with the fires and the droughts, with probably the least amount of seed production and recorded history this year. So seed is scarce. Anyone that has some old crop seed, which is grown last year, which the mill has still plenty in stock, Sorry about that. I had a phone call. Um, the new crop will not be available till late September, October, and we have no idea in what quantities so might be allowing different companies only so much. We still don't know where that's going, but yeah, if you can get your seed now, do that. But first thing, get the product down there, and these need to be stopped before they uh, even get worse. OK, so and if we do have customers coming in and thinking that they have a problem, do you recommend that they take pictures um, and send them to you or sure. um, it, would that be all right? And then um, what what would you need to know from them? How how big of an area they have to be able to give them a recommendation for a product they can use? Correct. No. They'll figure it out pretty quickly. If you have a small brown area the size of a basketball on Friday, and then you look at it on Sunday and Monday, and it's quadrupled or 10 times the size, it's army worms. There's no disease that goes that fast. Plus, we're in a nice, dry, cool weather period right now. Even Pythium does not move that fast, and that's a pretty bad disease, but there's going to be no disease issues here in the next five to seven or even two weeks with this nice weather we're having. It's going to be army worms. OK, and and if they have if they have issues this year in their lawn. Is it likely to persist into next year? Will they spore no. over? OK, so a one. 
Yeah, it all depends on the winter. If we have a really regular winter where the ground freezes and everything's normal and not a warm winter, then we'll start back from page zero and they'll be down south and they probably won't make it up here. But for next spring, when you do your third app in June, use the 1505 the Celeprin. That way you'll take care of all your grubs, web worms, and any army worm outbreak because it has that three or four month residual. And that's the uh, that would be the thing. I, 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 that's what I will do next year for sure. Um, I have not done a grub treatment in my yard ever because I've never had any, but I am putting the 1505 at Celebrant down on my yard tomorrow. Okay, and so if they used that product, the acelaprin, earlier, like in June this summer, are they fairly well protected? Yes. Okay, so they wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily say to uh, reapply that for the fall? No. Okay. All righty. Um, is there anything else homeowners should know? No, this is kind of unprecedented. Um, I, I saw some pictures from my buddy who's up in Cleveland. He's at a golf course just in his neighborhood. He showed me a little video when he was driving. Hundreds of lawns completely dead. He lives in a very nice neighborhood. He was driving through. He's like, there's one, there's one. I mean, some next door to each other, some skipped because they might have had a lawn care company that did a grub treatment with the celebrant. and you can't tell just by driving by. But the amount of... Uh, turf devastation was alarming and it's just now started here this time last week i heard of one report that someone thought they had brown patch and it was expansive and then i started looking at stuff on monday and i was like i found one i was like i can't believe this is army worm and then from there on out 20 calls a day i was at the Bellary store for a couple hours today at least three or four people called and came in and were talking about it so it's uh it's happening and it's happening Okay, alrighty. Uh, so we will try to get our staff trained and get the word out to customers um, so that they can be on the lookout and try to get their lawns taken care of or prevent this from happening to them because as we mentioned, seed is gonna be scarce and very expensive and we'd hate to see them lose their lawns. So thank you very much for joining in today, John. You're quite welcome. All right, we'll talk later, bye. Bye-bye.